Hey friend, welcome to the video. Today, I want to give you the ability to put your kick drum wherever you need to in any groove environment. Whether it's 16th notes, 8th notes, quarter notes, upbeat 8th notes, Single-handed sixteenths. And many more. It's a concept and it's not a new one. The person that I learned it from is Mike Johnson and also kind of a variation of it from JP Bouvet. So credit to them. I want to show this to you because for me it was such a game changer. Um, I used to kind of like listen to a song and try and play along with the drum part and I was just kind of guessing as to where I should be putting my kick because I hadn't worked through this really specific system. The PDF chart for this concept and this exercise that I'm going to show you in this video will be at the link below as well as my Sunday drum prep guide that I've put together to help you not only support your team and play the songs well but also to get you to the point where you don't have to focus on your drum part so much and a lot of that is done by simplifying what we're playing and simplifying our drum charts or notes etc etc so if you're interested have a look at that and I hope it helps so I'm just going to jump in to a demonstration of this exercise I'll explain it really quick what I'm doing is I'm playing the kick on the one and three initially and then I'm moving it to the E of 1 and the E of 3, so one sixteenth note later, all the way to the R of 2 and the R of 4, and then it repeats and starts again. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to play, say, an eighth note groove, a sixteenth note groove, and some tricky ones that I'm probably going to get tricked up on. So let me break down what's actually going on and for this I'm just going to be playing 8th notes on the hi-hat to keep it simple. So the first bar in this whole exercise would be the kick in its normal position on the 1 and the 3. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Now the next bar is the kick on the E of 1 and the E of 3. 1 E and 2 and 3 E and 4 and. One more time. One. 
and two and three e and four and. Okay, so the third bar would be the kick on the end of one and the end of three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The next would be the uh of one and the uh of three. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So the next one we're moving it over to the two and the four. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then the next would be the e of two and the e of four. One. And two E and three and four E and one and two E and three and four E and next would be the and of two and the and of four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then finally the a. Uh, of two and the uh, four, one and two and a uh, three and four and a uh, one and two and a uh, three and four and a uh, one. So see how I did two kicks there? That's when you loop it back to the start of the whole exercise. I'll show you that transition from the last bar to the first bar. One and two and a uh, three and four and a uh, one and two and three and four and so if you can do each bar by itself well that's the first step the next step is being able to just flow through the whole exercise and loop it at this point just in one groove environment and i would suggest starting with the eighth note hi-hat pattern the next step would be just to try some random kick patterns and I'll, i would just use groove scribe for this let me make one real quick. Keep in mind that you don't want any double kicks together yet. This one is a kick on one, kick on the E of two, the E of three, and then the and of four. So this one I'm about to show you was a kick pattern that was very elusive to me until I started to practice this system. So that's the system in a nutshell, but I've only shown you single kicks, right? The next step would be working on double kicks. If we think back to House of the Lord. There's a double kick in there. One E and a two E and a two E and the kick on E and of three. So until you go through this system with double kicks as well, that sort of stuff will trip you up. So let me demonstrate that once just with the eighth note hi-hat and then I'll break it down for you. Okay, so let's break that down. So the first bar would be the kick starting on the one and on the three, but it's two sixteenth notes. So one E and two and three E and four and. That means the first kick is with a hi-hat, the second kick is in between your hi-hats. One E and two and three E and four and one more time. One E and two and three e and four and the next would be starting on the e of one and the e of three one e and two and three e and four and 
one E and two and three E and four and one E and two and three E and four and. So the next bar would be the and of two and the end of three. So one and a two and three and a four and one and a two and three and a four and one and a two and three and a four and the next would be starting on the a uh, going into the two so one and a two and three and a four and one and a two and three and a four and one and a two and three and a four and now in all of these is probably going to be just two or three notes that are really tricky and in this one it might be a two a two and once you get that comfortable then add the first two hi-hats on one and a two one and a two and then add the rest on one and a two and three and a four and that's um, a way of breaking it down for yourself and just working on the thing that's tricky add the next bit and and then add the next bit until you've got the whole thing happening the next bar would be one and two e and three and four e and one and E and three and four E and one and two E and three and four E and and the next one would be two E and and four E and one and two E and three and four E and one and two E and three and four E now we'll have two and a and four and a. So one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a. Then the a three and the a one. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one. Keep in mind again when you loop the whole thing going from the last bar back to the first bar, you're actually going to have three kicks this time. One and two and a three and four and a one e and two and three e and four and. So if you just practice this for the next two weeks or a month, single kick options in 16th notes, double kick options in 16th notes you would have a lot of kick freedom but not only that you'll have control and awareness of what's going on awareness when you're listening to music and you're trying to learn the kick pattern because it'll make sense you'll have a grid to put it to and i would suggest spending the first couple days just on eighth note hi-hats and single kicks and then once that's starting to come good, introduce the double kicks, start trying to do the double kicks, and then once both the singles and doubles in eighth notes are feeling pretty good, then start experimenting with sixteenth notes with one hand, sixteenth notes with two hands, um, quarter notes, etc, etc. Those, those four that I just mentioned are quite common in church music for sure, at least the stuff I play. Again, just a reminder to get the PDF chart at the link below, as well as my Sunday drum prep guide. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope this has helped. And I will see you in the next one.